but wanted to come and could not come Friday. We moved it up a date uh, because of the fact that we had this forecast that would rain on Saturday and we were trying to get those plants in the ground. And so I want to thank uh, uh, those who came. I think Riley was here and uh, she got her hand dirty planting and, uh, and of course my grandkids. But we're gonna do something next Saturday, uh, be God's will, it does not rain. We have a few other things we need to get planted and uh, cause everybody know I'm an outdoors person. And so we're gonna help the kids uh, to build, to show them how to build what I call a raised garden and how to paint it and, and use a raised garden as, uh, as a uh, resource to even bring uh, some uh, uh, creativity to your yard. And a lot of people uh, use that borders, no type of thing. So I'm gonna show the kids how to make a little raised garden and then plant. And uh, we're in hope of getting uh, a grant this year uh, uh, that uh, for, for the garden. When we get that garden, we're gonna uh, utilize it more and helping uh, kids who are at risk learn all about planting uh, the nutrients of the uh, vitamins that are in certain type of plants and the growing seeds in a certain type of plants. Uh, I think once a person starts ever plant something, you really get a kick out of uh, really just with nothing more than a tomato plant uh, growing on your deck or backyard and you're pulling a fresh tomato. Uh, it is some, a, a popular thing in not many urban areas uh, to have some type of um, raised garden to give fresh vegetables. And it's really needed in, in areas where we have what we call food insecurity, uh, not, not so much desert, food desert. There's a difference between a food desert and food insecurity. And uh, so we uh, intend to span our garden issue. We put some things in there that we intend to have the kids come and you know, like on Saturday morning harvest some of the vegetables and then take them to certain communities where there may be certain uh, food insecurity here in Nashville. Uh, the other thing uh, we need, we're gonna be doing uh, is that we are in the process, uh, I'm in at Vanderbilt now in a course of program evaluation and uh, we're evaluating some of our ministry and our corporate ministry. And uh, one of the things we're looking at evaluating, our, we're evaluating our uh, pantry. We call it a, a manor storehouse. And I am going to ask uh, the members to do me a favor to fill out a survey. Uh, uh, between now and the next month, I'll start breaking the forms next week. It, you will not put your name on it because I want you to be very honest uh, with the question I'm going to ask you. And so come prepared next week and until the end of the month uh, to complete a survey as we uh, try to get some questions we need to deal with our process and invitation and outcomes and hopefully impact of our uh, amount of storehouse. And so come prepared to be honest and uh, we're not gonna require your name. And so just want you to fill out that survey and then continue to pray for us that we got a grant uh, in our healthy men, healthy community. We'll be having a seminar in September. And so I'm praying that most of the uh, people will be uh, vaccinated so we can have an in-person gathering. And so I continue um, to push your Second Baptist uh, to get your, um, uh, get vaccinated. If you have any concern whatsoever, please talk to your primary physician. Um, now there are some people that have some mild reactions and there are people like me that didn't have, did not have any reaction whatsoever. Uh, I didn't have any whatsoever. I had a mild soreness of arm on the first shot, but the second shot I didn't have, I guess I gotten used to it. It, it didn't bother me at all the second shot. And so, um, and there are some people who do have some soreness, but that is expected. 
when you take any type of shot. I mean, if you ever taken a shot, but no more than a flu shot, you're gonna have what? Some soreness in your arm. Uh, but COVID does kill, and there are some other variants out there uh, other than this 19 strain. It's another variant that's, that's killing a lot of, we're getting a lot of people sick in the uh, state of Michigan. And so we need to make sure that you are fully protected. I thank God for those of you here at Second Baptist uh, that have been vaccinated. Um, as I say all the time, you know, uh, don't listen to these rumors out here. Yeah, there are some sore arms for some people. Sometimes some people have some mouth, chills, that kind of stuff. But uh, you, if you catch COVID and overcome it, there are some side effects that you may have to live with for all your life. And we're, uh, they're now finding people, because I am, I work with researchers here in Nashville. I do, the, do, I do that focus group for them. And uh, there are people, now I'm gonna have some side effects and long-term side effects. And so our bodies are not the same. Your body, some people come out of something, don't have any effect at all. But then some people have, have what? An effect. And so the danger of not getting vaccinated because of a soreness of an arm, uh, a little chill. If you ever catch COVID, you may have a long-term, lifetime side effect. Some people have lost their smell altogether. And so uh, those, those are some things they're getting to see now. So as I say to all of us, if you have real concern, a like real hesitance about taking the vaccine, please talk to your primary physician. Your physician will tell you what is best for you. And so good, uh, good to see that some of you are talking to a physician that has some hesitance to, about taking the vaccine. Uh, good to see some of you I have not seen in some time. Uh, Sister Evelyn, good to see you, amen. Amen, some of you I have not seen since March of last year, amen. And then Brother Eric, I've seen you since March, but good to see you again. <laughs> and uh, good to see our Ursha uh, on the door again, our bus driver. And so again, I thank God for you all coming to church, wearing your mask. As I said, some people, we had never closed down the, our house of worship. We followed the CDC, CDC guidelines, reduced the crowd, still crowds still reduced, but we reduced the crowd to eight people at one time. And, uh, but we never closed down. Uh, we simply follow the science. So I tell people I believe in science, believe in God first, and then I believe in science. I believe all good things come from the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm not going to ask God to heal me when he gives me medication. Amen. <laughs> Help me somebody. Amen. If he's giving the medication to take, there's no need for me to ask him what to heal me. Uh, but simply what take that which he has provided for me. And so let us be reasonable as well as be faithful unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've shared enough, so next Saturday, uh, all our youth, you all will meet us at, uh, I'm gonna say 10 o'clock, I, I got some people at work. I almost said lazy, but they really work. <laughs> I almost got some lazy people but they not even really work. And, uh, and so if you all will meet me at 10 o'clock, they say that God will bring the children, uh, parents bring the children, I'm gonna teach them how to do raised garden, how to build a simple raised garden, uh, how to you know, measure the saw to go in a certain, so you understand what we call cubic yards, and all that kind of stuff, and how to plant it, how to water it, and I think they will really enjoy it, amen. And so bring them at 10 o'clock, and we're going to have that little farm back there in the back on Lake Saturday if it's not raining. Amen. How many of you came to worship today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is so good, as we say, he's awesome. Amen. And for this brief time, we'll come, we'll come to worship God. I want to thank God again. I may not, I'm going to share this uh, because... Stanley Easy, uh, a friend of mine who's gone to be with God, a pastor of Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, had a saying, and he always said, 
is a mighty poor person who won't brag on some things. Amen. And what the word he used, I'm not going to use. I'm going to call somebody a name. I want to thank my daughter and her sister uh, for we're going to upgrade our sound room. And because of a donation that's being given to us from my daughter. Uh, uh, as you all know, I, I did, God did not bless myself and my wife with natural daughters, but we have a daughter. Uh, she called, always called me dad number two, and my mother, my, and her, her mother, my wife. Uh, and, uh, and that's Tara. So she and Cora has uh, donated funds for us to upgrade our sound room, new laptop, uh, audio mixer, and all that kind of stuff. And so I want to thank God for her kindness. Amen. 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 That's my daughter. Amen. And so we'll be upgrading our sound room. So we may move this from here and get Margaret to do all that back there. Amen. So thank God for uh, her kindness. And we're getting ready to have church. Amen. Amen. Getting ready to have church. Amen. Getting ready to have church. I'm going to ask Ella Goose to come now and lead us further in, in worship. Amen. Church, say amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. I said, if you love the Lord, say amen again. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why don't you stand at your feet and give God praise on today? Come on, let's magnify him. Let's glorify him on today. He is the King of Kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. We give God all glory and honor and praise on today. Amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. Amen. We thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience here at the Second Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Pastor Barlow, his lovely wife, the deacons of our church, the trustees of our church, the ministers of our church, we greet you with Jesus' joy. For each of you who are visiting with us, we thank you for allowing Second Missionary Baptist Church to be your place of worship this Sunday, morning, this Sunday morning, whether you are worshiping virtually or in person. We thank you for being here today. As Pastor Barlow says, we thank and welcome our guest ministers who are sharing with us today, uh, Reverend Michael Whitney, Reverend Jerry London, and also none other, Reverend Bruce Hams. We thank you for being here on today. Amen. Second Baptist, let's welcome our visitors and guests with a hand clap. Amen. Amen. We're blessed. I said we're blessed, church. I said we are blessed, church. Amen. Amen. We are truly blessed. We're thankful that God has blessed us. He has provided for us. He has sustained us during this pandemic. Thankful for the generous gifts as Pastor Barlow has uh, shared with us of one of our members, his daughter, Sister Tara. Thank God for her and all of you all who continue to give generously and sacrificially out of the depths of your heart. Amen. God honors faithfulness. Amen. The Bible says in the back book of Malachi that God will open up windows of heaven. And pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive it. If we give to him first. Amen. Amen. Any witnesses on today that can testify that when you put God first, God will put you first. Amen. Amen. He is a, he is a provider. He is a sustainer. We thank him and we bless him. We're thankful for our financial team who has made this giving very possible during the pandemic where we can give safely and secure, securely electronically through PayPal at SNBC1902 at, at Hotmail.com. You can give through Givelify, which is an app that you can download on your electronic devices. And you can find us at Second Missionary Baptist Church. You can give through Cash App at dollar sign SNBC1902. That's also an app that you can download on your phone. Or if you're old school and you just want to give your tithe and offering through mail, you can mail your tithe and offering to the church at 1000 Housing Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. However you choose to give, 
We pray that you take advantage of these platforms that have been made available to you here at Second Missionary Baptist Church. Let's bless God for our financial team. Amen. And we thank God for our gifts on today. Amen. As you continue to sow in the ministry of this church. Amen. Let us now stand to prepare our to recite our vision statement together. If you would stand with me and if you're worshiping with us virtually, you can stand wherever you are at home as we recite our vision statement together. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. I see, the commu I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creative life. Let us all say together, we see transformation and let it start with me. Put those blessed hands together for the Lord on today. Amen. If you would be so kind to remain standing as we read our scripture on today. Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 12 and I'll be reading from the NIV version blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, they will also persecute me. The word of God for the people of God and God's people said together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. For this day, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up early this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you, Lord, for food, clothes, shelter, health and strength. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to come into your house and gather in your name and worship you on today. We worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. God, thank you for loving us. And because you've loved us first, God, we can now love ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for dying on that cross. Thank you, Lord, for getting up on that third appointed morning. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that you've given us through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. God, as we have assembled ourselves together to worship you in spirit and in truth, we pray that your spirit will fall fresh on us on today. God, allow your spirit to move in this place like it's never moved before. God, touch our praise team. Touch the musicians. Touch every person that will play a part of this worship experience and allow your name to be glorified and you your people be edified god i pray right now for those who are sick among us those who are suffering from the pandemic and job loss and all the different things that we are faced with on today god you said you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory that are found in christ jesus we thank you right now by faith that we can declare victory over every area of our life. God, we thank you by faith that whatever is sick in our bodies, we declare healing. We thank you, Lord, by faith that we are healed and set free. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. As we look back over our lives and see just how good you've been to us, all we can do, God, say, is say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, Lord, for being our Savior. Thank you, Lord for being our sustainer thank you lord for being our all in all spirit of the living god fall fresh on us on today spirit of the living god fall fresh on us on today anoint 
this praise team as they prepare to sing your hymn praises. And again, anoint the hands of the musicians as they play to your glory. God, as we close this prayer, we repeat the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord on today. Amen. As we go higher in our worship. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Let's worship him in this place. There's none like you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Almighty God, there is none like you. Yes. I worship you, O oh Prince of Peace. That is what I love. For my righteousness, I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. There my heart like you do. I can search for all, e all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Say there is none.
There's no one like him. Amen. There is no one like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's no one can hold us as he can hold us in the midnight hours. There's no one that can comfort us as he can. There's no one like him. Thank you, praise team. This morning, our minister of education is going to bring the message this morning. We thank God for him. We know that he can preach and he will preach. Amen. We're so happy, amen, to have him here with us to serve and minister alongside me. We just thank God for his presence, thank God for his wife. And the day is his birthday. Amen. Amen. Uh, if I was in Ripley, Tennessee, I would go out to the oak tree and get a long switch and we would, and we would uh, put some stripes up on him so he can grow a little more. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why people in the country want to whoop folks when they turn had a birthday. How, anybody out back got whooped when you got a birthday? Amen. Mama got some switches. Amen. I don't know why they want to do that. Amen. But that was a country tradition. They often they go to the, get a limb on birthday. But we're so happy to have him with us. And uh, I don't know how the choir, you have another song. So uh, the, next for you, the next for us you will hear would be our own. Uh, the Reverend uh, uh, Ella Michael Gooch. Pray for him. Pray that God will use him to speak a word unto us today. Ella Gooch, amen. Let us pray. God, help me to say it right. Help your people to hear it right. So that we all can get it right. All that I am, I am because of thee. And all that I'm not, I'm not because of me. Hide me behind the cross. You be glorified. Your people be edified. Let the words in my mouth And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you don't mind, give God some praise. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. To the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. To my pastor who I love, respect, and cherish very much for this opportunity to share with you, church family, my convictions concerning the Christ. To the deacons of this church, Deacon Jeff, Deacon Steve, Deacon Nixon in his absence, thank God for you to trustee and musician John Barlow, amen. To this wonderful praise team, amen, who Amen. 
continue to sing out of the depths of their heart. Amen. Who blesses my spirit every time I hear them sing. Amen. Such a wonderful balance of music that we are exposed to and presented with on each and every Sunday. I want to thank God for Sister Lindsay Hams who leads this praise team. Amen. 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 There is a word we want to look at. It comes out of the gospel as recorded by Mark. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. want to start at verse 24. I'll be reading from the King James, Mark chapter 5, verse 24. If you would like, you can stand for the reading of God's word. If you're unable, that's perfectly okay. Mark chapter 5, verses 24. Verses 34. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest, Thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You may be seated at this time. I want to talk from the subject surviving with issues surviving with issues the gospel of mark highlights the humanity of Jesus. Unlike John who paints and portrays Jesus as the son of God, the divine word of God, the Logos, Mark portrays Jesus as the son of man. Mark thesis can be found in chapter 10, verse 45. Mark says that Jesus records these words, that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark paints Jesus as the suffering servant who came into this world to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark writes his gospel with pace, pulse, and purpose. Mark chapter 1, verse 18 through 20, he re as he assembles his ministry team while calling Peter and John from their occupation of fishermen, the Bible says that they dropped their nets and they followed him immediately. Mark chapter 1, verse 42, Mark records a man with leprosy in the synagogue. Jesus sees the man in his condition. The Bible says that Jesus touches the man and the text says that his leprosy left immediately. Mark chapter 2 verse 12. While Jesus is visiting Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Who was sick with a fever. The Bible says that after he had healed Peter's mother-in-law. The text says that her fever left immediately. Mark writes with both pace, purpose, and and conviction. Mark shares with us before we even look at the narrative of the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus might not be a right now God, but he's always an on time God. Amen, somebody. That just when you need Jesus, he's always there at the right time. I wish I had a witness on today that could testify to the fact that God probably didn't come when you wanted him to. But he's always on time. Mark says that Jesus did these things immediately. Mark chapter 5, Jesus, while on his way to a man by the name of Jairus' house to heal his daughter who had been sick, is encountered by a woman with the issue of blood. Text says that when she had heard that Jesus was in town, she got up early that morning, put on her clothes, pressed her way through the crowd, and decided to touch the hem of his garment. Text says that after she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible asks that Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples turns to Jesus and says, you seeing this large crowd going to ask us who touched you? <laughs> the Bible says, Mark says, that Jesus seeing the woman says to the woman, that your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. And the Bible says that after she had touched the hem of his garment, her plague had dried up. That's the story. Let's back this thing up. 
because I believe there are some things that God wants to share with us from this text, and we can all go home and celebrate my birthday together. The woman with the issue of blood. This entire narrative simply shares with us this morning that we should never allow our issues to stop us from trusting God. When we condense and summarize this entire narrative, what Mark teaches us through the life of this woman with the issue of blood shares with us that we should never allow our issues to stop us from trusting God. Because the truth of the matter is, all of us in here have at least one issue. <laughs> all of us in here are struggling with something. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how well you speak in tongues. I don't care how many times you've been baptized, how much scripture you know. I don't care if you can walk on water. All of us in here have some issues. And the truth of the matter is that we should never allow our issues to stop us from trusting God. Bible says... That while Jesus was on his way to see about Jairus' 12-year-old daughter, who was at the point of death, the text says that Jesus encounters this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. Lord have mercy. What this text shares with us, Second Baptist, it shares with us that God is never too busy to stop by and see about you. Lord have mercy. While God is on his way to see and take care of somebody else, the God we serve is never too busy to stop by and see about you. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise, that can worship God today, to know that God is never too busy to stop by and see about you while yet he was on his way to get aid and attention to this 12-year-old girl. The Bible says he's not too busy to see about this woman. Look at the contrast that Mark presents us with. A woman who had been suffering from an issue of blood for 12 years. And here you have a little girl who's 12 years old. What a contrast. Here you see an anonymous woman. And here you see a man by the name of Jairus. In this text, the Bible shows us that we don't have to be concerned with titles and, and people who will want us to call us by name. Because the Bible is not clear about who this woman is. Mark is just concerned with identifying this woman by her issue. And how many of us, Lord have mercy, have been guilty of identifying people not by their name, but by their issues? The church is guilty of judging and identifying people not by who they are, but by what they've done. Lord have mercy. And if we had more Christians who were interested in learning who you were, rather than about what you've done, what would the church be like on today? The Bible says we don't know this woman's name. All we know is that she suffered from an issue of blood. You know how we do in church. That'll go with that girl with three kids and she's not married. There goes that boy with his pants hanging down and tattoos all over his body. You know how we do. 
We identify people not by their name, but rather by their issues. And Mark says that we have a woman with the issue of blood. The text says that Jesus has a crowd following him. And the Bible says that the crowd was so large that the woman was unable to get to Jesus at first. Brothers and sisters, what this text shows us is that you can be in the vicinity of Jesus and not be in touch with Jesus. Lord have mercy. That you can be in the same space with Jesus and not have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that the crowd followed him, but the woman wasn't able to get to Jesus. Who in here am I talking to on today? That you come to church Sunday after Sunday. That you attend Bible study Tuesday after Tuesday. And you still don't have a relationship with Jesus. The woman couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd. The crowd followed Jesus not because of who he was, but the crowd followed Jesus because of what he could do. Lord have mercy. And some of us only love and serve Jesus not because of who he is but we only worship and serve God for what he's done and God is saying to us on today that we have to learn to grow to a level in our walk with God that if God does nothing else for us we'll still love and serve him just as much as he's already done for us because the truth of the matter is if he does nothing else he's already done enough can I get a witness on today that can testify that the Lord does nothing else for you, that God has already done enough. He woke you up this morning and started you on your way. He laid you down last night and kept you from hurt, harm, and danger. He put food on your table when your job ran out on you. He took care of your kids after he walked out on you. The Bible says that this woman trusted God. The crowd followed him only because of what Jesus could do for them. Text says, this woman got up early that morning, got herself dressed, came to Jesus. Text says that she had spent all that she had, and her condition grew worse. She exhausted all her resources. She did all that she knew to do. And no one could assist her. This woman, brothers and sisters, is ceremonial unclean. According to Leviticus chapter 15, verses 25 through 27, anything that she touched or sat on was considered unclean. And because she had a flea flowing hemorrhage, the Bible says that because she was ceremonial unclean, she couldn't be around anybody. She was a social outcast because of her condition. Because of what was wrong with her, she couldn't intermingle with society. Because of her issues, she was not able to be welcomed. Let me set the house in order real quick. <laughs> None of us in here have a place to talk about anybody. None of us in here are too good to where we can turn our nose up at anybody. Because all of us in here 
have done something. All of us in here are struggling with something. And I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how well you dress. We all are struggling with something. She got dressed. Spent all she had. Condition grew worse. She makes up in her mind that she has nothing to lose. She tries Jesus. All three Gospels share this narrative. Matthew says she came talking. Matthew says in his account that she came talking. She made a conscious and deliberative decision to get to Jesus. And I want to serve notice on today that the fact that this woman talking says to us, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It only matters what you said about yourself. Because when we're struggling with issues, sometimes we got to learn how to encourage ourselves. It doesn't matter what people say about you, but rather it's about what you say about yourself. This woman came talking. She made up in her mind that she was going to get to Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood it's an amazing narrative because what it says to us, y'all, the real miracle is, is that this woman has been bleeding constantly for 12 years, and yet she's still alive. Her issue tried to kill her, but the miracle of the text is that she survived her issue. Lord have mercy. Life is in the blood. When you lose blood, you lose life. And the text said for 12 years, she had been bleeding constantly, but yet she was still living. Okay, y'all want to act slow. You're here today because the Lord allowed you to be a survivor. Your issue didn't take you out. Your issue didn't destroy you. Your issue didn't stop you from being here today. And we give God praise today because God sustained us even in the midst of our issues. I'm concerned today that some of us come and sit in church with all the issues that we have and we sit down and act like it's because of us we're here today. But God teaches us through this text that God sustains us even in the midst of our issues. This woman's issue said that she should have been dead, but God kept her. To this very point. We're surviving today with our issues. This woman came Pressing through the crowd. Listen, this woman was determined that she wasn't going to let anybody or anything stop her from getting to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, sometimes God has to deplete your resources just to show you who you should have been trusting in the beginning. Sometimes the Lord has allowed your well to run dry in order to appreciate your water. The Bible says she exhausted all her resources, but she came pressing through the crowd. Is there anybody in here determined that you're not going to let anybody or anything stop you from getting to Jesus? Matthew says she came talking. This woman didn't care nothing about what the crowd thought about her. She had a mission. Dick and Jeff, she was trying to get to Jesus. And some of us, Lord, deliver us from the opinions and criticisms of people. 
that we are so caught up on what people think about us and what people say about us that it stops us from growing closer to God it stops us from fulfilling our purpose in God you have to get to a point in God where you stop worrying about people and do what God has called you to do because you should be old enough to know you can't please everybody and you should be wise enough to know that everybody ain't gonna like you I don't care how much you do. I don't care what you say. Everybody's not going to like you and everybody you can't please. This woman came talking. Not only did this woman come talking, she came trusting. What motivates this woman to get up early this morning and to go see Jesus. But Mark says, Pastor, she heard about Jesus. She had heard what Jesus had done for somebody else. Maybe it was in chapter 4 when Jesus healed the man in the cemetery and performed the exorcism that she had heard of. He can cast out demons. Surely he can cure me from my plague. Maybe it was that he heard about Peter's mother-in-law. That he was sick with a fever. And he, she knew that if he could stop a fever, she could stop my hemorrhage. Maybe it was blind Bartimaeus that he knew that couldn't see. But if he knew that he could open his eyes to see, that he could do something about her condition. She had heard about Jesus it is our faith that grows when we hear the word of God we grow in our faith when we hear the word of God preached and taught the stronger your faith becomes the more word you have in your life and God is saying to us if you want to grow in your faith you got to entune yourself with the word of God she got up early that morning because she had heard what God had done for somebody else. <laughs> and I wish I had just half a church that could testify that you know that whatever God does for somebody else, God is able to do it for me. That if God took care of somebody else, the Lord is able to take care of me. When we hear the testimonies and stories of our brothers and sisters or how good God has been to them, it increases our faith in God, knowing that God can take care of whatever situation that we have in our lives. She came trusting. Pastor, all of these verbs in this narrative are in the imperfect tense, which means it's a continual action. She didn't just trust God one time. She kept on trusting. Her plague is in the imperfect tense, which means her hemorrhage kept on flowing. Y'all sleep. Come on, y'all. Her faith had to match her condition. She had to have just as much faith as worse as her condition was. And somebody here knows that your faith has to be just as strong as your trial. Whatever that you're going through, you got to learn how to have faith in God no matter what you're facing. She knew that the kind of trial she had, she had to have consistent faith in God. She had to keep trusting God. Because she knew that the crowd was a deterrent for her to get to God. But she was determined to touch Jesus. She came trusting. She came talking. But lastly, she came touching. I'm almost done. I appreciate y'all. Bible says... That the crowd was so swelled 
If you read the New Testament language, it, it was it's the strongest word that, the, that you could use to talk about or describe the crowd. It was literally shoulder to shoulder. That she could not touch him. But the, Mark says that she was determined, so determined, that she touched the hem of his garment. She knew the hymn was just as important as touching him. And brothers and sisters, sometimes in our lives, when we can't really get to that place that we want to be, we got to sometimes make an effort to grab whatever we can. This shows us that when we can't really get to that place or get what we're trying to get to, we can't allow that to stop us from getting hold to something. Lord have mercy. Your faith in God should be so persuaded that if you know you can't touch him, the fact that you can touch something that was on him is just as good as touching him. Because whatever God has, it's a part of him. And she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says that immediately her plague was dried up. This woman's faith was remarkable. But you know, with always these kinds of instances, you have the disciples. Who says, Master, why are you asking who touched you? Jesus, being the God man, knew who the woman was. But he asked a question so the disciples could know who had touched him. The Bible says that after she touched him, her plague dried up. And she told the woman to go in peace. Brothers and sisters, the woman with the issue of blood teaches us that we're here today because God has sustained us through our issues. The woman with the issue of blood shows us that we should never allow our issues to stop us from trusting God. The Bible says that she told, he told the woman to go to peace. And I like that because when you read that in the original text, it literally says, go into peace. In other words, Jesus was saying, there's a place of peace for you after all the pain that you have experienced. And that's God's word for somebody on today that after all that you've been through, after all that you faced, there's a place of peace that God is prepared to sing you into. And I don't care what your issue may be. And I don't care what you may be facing. The Bible says that this woman came trusting. The Bible says that this woman came talking. The Bible says that this woman came touching. And I like what this text says because it shows us that we don't have to allow our issues to stop us from trusting God. That God is bigger than our issues. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise to know that whatever issue that you're facing, the Lord can and the Lord will take care of your issues. This woman got up early that morning and she pressed her way through the crowd and she was determined and she was focused just to get to Jesus. Is there anybody in here that determined that focused just to get to Jesus? Are you here today because the Lord has kept you? Are you here today because you got some issues? But the good news is that the Lord still loves you in spite of your issues. That he still protects you in spite 
spite of your issues that the Lord keeps you in spite of your issues is there anybody in here that can give God praise that he's a God that looks past our issues and when he does he promises to give us to a place of peace in him I do what y'all on today glad to have you but as I close this sermon I want to let somebody know never allow your issues to stop you from trusting God we all got some issues but the good news is a man named Jesus hung on the cross he bled from the sixth to the ninth hour he hung down with all my issues all my secrets all my things that are wrong with me he still loves me in spite of me with all the stuff I have going on in my life he still been good to me has he been good to you has he been good to you can you say yeah can you say yeah can you give God praise in spite of your issues can you give God praise in spite of your troubles can you give God praise in spite of your trials say yeah say yeah say yeah give God praise he's a God who takes care of issues if you got an issue Put it at the altar. If you got an issue, give it to Jesus. He'll take care of it. Say yeah. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Put your hands together for the preacher. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Surviving with issues. I want you to hear what the preacher has said today. He has said to us that the issue is there. But the issue has not defeated me. And that you are not to allow your issue, your problem, to stop you from going forth. Do I have anybody in the house today? Surviving with issues. Thank you, Brother Preacher. Because there are some people who have issues. And sometimes we allow our issues to cause us to give up. But when you look at the woman in the narrative, she didn't allow her issue to stop her from having hope. Thank you, Brother Preacher. Because we got some issues. And issues sometimes can rob you of your hope. Issues sometimes can rob you of your self-worthiness. But the woman did not give up. And there's maybe somebody here today, I want us to stand, that you're dealing with some issues. But the preacher has said to us today, that you can overcome your issues. You can overcome your issues. If you are here today and 
whatever problems you are having now. A word has been given to us today that you can overcome your issues. If you can just hold out until you make it to Jesus, anybody willing to hold out? You're going through it right now. The preachers help us to understand if you just hold out and touch the hem of his garment, you too can be made whole. I don't know who we're talking to today, but there's somebody perhaps who listened to this message today. You have an issue. It may be your finance. It may be your marriage. It may be your children. But don't allow your issues to rob you of your hope. Jesus is able. How many of y'all believe that Jesus is able? He's able to deal with your issue, whatever it might be. If there are one today, don't be ashamed. So, Lord, I'm going to bring my issue to you. I'm going to bring my problem to you. Whatever you're dealing with today, Jesus is the answer. And so I want to extend to some, if you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, make up your mind, make your decision today to trust Jesus the Christ for the one who can handle your problem. You have not followed him in believer baptism. We offer you opportunity to come. Say, Lord, here I am, a wretch undone, but you promised never to leave me, never to forsake me. Wherever you may be, if you're viewing this worship service by Facebook and God has touched your heart, the word of God has touched your heart, rather, and the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. Find a local congregation that where you too can become a part of this great body of Christ. Jesus is the answer. Thank you, preacher, for helping us to understand that our issues don't have to defeat us, that we can survive our issues. May God bless you, preacher. May God bless you today. We extend to you an open invitation to see Christ as your personal Savior. Thank you. You may have your seats. Again, we are so thankful. We are appreciative for the word that's been shared today reminding us that we can survive our problems. That we don't have to allow our problems to defeat us. We don't have to allow our problems to rob us of hope. Make your way to Jesus the Christ. And I pray that this week, that whatever comes in your life, that you remember this message today, that Jesus is the answer, that he can help you to survive your problem. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Again, we're so thankful and so appreciative for the word today. And I pray that the word today that you have listened, and I pray that you have allowed the word to enter your heart, your soul, your, your total being, that whatever happened this week, that you can recall this message, and you too can survive your issue. Until we meet again, may God bless you. May God keep you, is my prayer. Again, thank you, Ella Gooch, for this mighty, powerful word, a practical word, a relevant word, 
as we deal and live with the times which we find ourselves in, for all the issues we face, and as you were preaching that message, I thought about how our foreparents lived with issues, but they didn't allow the issue to stop them. They learned how to survive with the issues. Amen. Amen. What a relevant word. What a, a real word. They learned how to survive. The reason that we are here today, because we had persons who went before us, that learn how to survive with their issues, all because of Jesus the Christ. Thank you again for that relevant word. Thank you again for that powerful word, that on time word. I'm going to ask that we'll stand now as we get ready to be dismissed. Again, let me just remind us of our activities. On Tuesday night, 6.30, a word from the word Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, that's every Tuesday night at 6.30 uh, p.m. Friday nights at 8 o'clock, I believe, our Young Adult Bible Study. On Sunday morning at 8.30, our Discovery Hour, and then, of course, at 9.40, I will praise and worship. And again, parents, if you can find the time, please allow your children to come and be a part of our 2021 Youth Garden uh, experience. Uh, we're doing some mighty good things this year. We intend to do some good things rather in our, with our garden back there. We can get kids involved in gardening and learning how to give time and service back to the community. And so if you have time, uh, please try to find some time and get them here at 10 o'clock on this coming Saturday. And if you can't pick them up, we'll get them back home for you. Thank God for all of you. I'm praying that you've been blessed by this message today as I have. I know I've been blessed, amen. I know I have been blessed, amen. Because all of us have problems, amen. Thank you again, Ella Good, for the word. Let us be dismissed. Again, thank you for all our preachers, Ella, all our preachers and our own preacher, uh, Sister Donna Patton, thank you for being here with us today. Let us be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for this precious moment that you allowed us to be a part of, to be hearers of your word. And now, Father, we pray that, that we find the boldness, the carriage, and the power to be submissive to the Holy Spirit as he will allow us to become doers of the word. Again, Lord, we thank you for this precious moment that you have extended unto us. Now unto him that's able to keep us, present us faultless before a just and merciful Father. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. It's in his name. Who died for the sins of this world. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all the saints of God say with me, amen and amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. And as the preacher say, go into peace. Amen. Go into peace. Amen. <laughs>